Hey everybody, welcome to Bird Tech. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about how Udemy doesn't really like hustlers or salespeople. All right, so let's take a look at the stock here. So today, the stock market is down quite a bit. A lot of the stocks that I follow are usually down. Surprisingly, one stock is up, which is Intel, which is kind of funny. Maybe it's just a bunch of short covering. I don't actually know. You never really know. But I find that funny that Intel has been on a major decline uh, for a long, long time. And um, it's now up again. So if we go back to five years, you can see it was up here around 68. And now it's still down 18%. Mm, let's go to the max here. Now look at that. You could have bought Intel at 32 cents back in the 90s. Well, that would have been a great investment. Nevertheless, let's take a look at Udemy's stock price here. So let's take a look at the six months here. So we've now gone below the $18 mark. And if there's a definitive close before $18, then I can expect perhaps a downtrend to, uh, to happen again. And I might as well do a technical analysis probably sometime later this week if I see anything. Remember, I do technical analysis off screen. And if I don't see anything, well, then um, I, I basically won't report it. But you know, whenever uh, it, you saw last week when I saw that downward channel, um, you could see that uh, it was something that worked here. But nevertheless, we have from $19, it's about 10% down. Uh, we're, the low was 17 or not. I think it actually dipped into 16 for a bit, but it was quickly bought up. So um, I would say 17 is now support-ish. Uh, so that's that. But what today I want to talk about is how Udemy doesn't like instructors to be hustlers. And this is a core fundamental reason as to one of the re well one of the reasons Udemy could do better than it is. And let's take a look at any kind of given company, right? You have people that make the product or design the product. You have people that make the product and you have people that sell the product, right? And of course, it's a very simple corporation, but that's basically what it is. Now on Udemy, if now if you want to go into Thinkific or Teachable, you could do that. You could have people that, you know, uh, design, like kind of write the scripts to the course. You could have some people that record the course and then you can have some people that sell the course, right? And this is what a, a company would do. Like this is what they would teach you in business school you know, for what business school is. But it, basically, if you look at any kind of business, like this is what you have. Now, sometimes that's all combined into one person, right? Like a person makes it and sells everything all by themselves. But here's the thing, Udemy really doesn't like doing that, right? Most of the top instructors just make it and then they let the Udemy do the rest of the selling. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I'm on Udemy is because they do sell my courses, right? The thing is, though, is that you don't get any leverage from selling your courses extra on Udemy. And that's why top talent tends to not even go there in the first place anymore, right? If you look at the top instructors, there's very few, if any, new top instructors in the last three years. It's a very tough, um, uh, tough nut to crack, I guess. Uh, and that's a huge problem. That should be a lot more dynamic based on uh, just basically, basically business fundamentals. And I know, and I say this because if you look at Steam in the App Store, the top apps and the top games are not necessarily the same, right? There is fluid, uh, it's, it's a lot more fluid, but, but if you look at Udemy, it's all static and that's because Udemy is artificially propping up the top sellers uh, through UFB and um, et cetera. So that's a huge problem. Now here's the, here's the kind of the, the crazy thing. Uh, Udemy, in order to get business to business sales, you need a lot of salespeople and a lot of hustlers to hustle those courses. But you can't, as an instructor, hustle your Udemy course in the same way. In fact, they really dislike that kind of hustle, even though they're profiting off of that kind of hustle in UFB. So, uh, because if you ever, if you ever have seen or have managed a B2B business team, you know that the hustle is real. Right, you really have to um, you really have to sell and you really have to hustle, but uh, you can't do that as a Udemy course. You can do that on Thinkific and Teachable, which is great, right? Because if you want to do that kind of stuff, then you can, right? You can build a business off of Teachable and Thinkific, but you can't build a scalable business off of Udemy, which I think is probably the most bearish case for Udemy. Now, remember, I'm not uh, bearish on entirely Udemy. It's just they're putting 
Um, you know, I used to have a teacher that said they put the emphasis on the wrong syllable, right? And that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, they're putting the emphasis on UFB because it's a subscription when really they should focus on getting the marketplace to be a billion, multi-billion dollar revenue generator. That's what they should be doing. And they don't really have to do much work. They just have to provide the software, which is crazy to think, right? Steam provides the software and then all the companies do their own marketing to push them up in the algorithms and those algorithms will sell themselves. And that's exactly what Udemy should do. That's exactly what other platforms do. And that's exactly what Udemy should do, but they're not going to do it. And you can expect the stock to suffer a little bit more because of that here. Now, of course, uh, the earnings report will come out at some point in time. And if they start to see more and more uh, subscriptions, you can expect a temporary pop. But long term, it is not a viable business model. They need to make that marketplace dynamic fluid, and they need people to be able to sell their courses and get leverage. That's really what they can do. And by selling leverage, uh, by selling the place on the algorithm, that's really what Udemy should be doing and allowing businesses to scale to million to $10 million um, companies, right? There should be 10, 20 of these $10 million companies on Udemy now, by now. And it was going that way, by the way. In fact, I did talk to a lot of Udemy employees five years ago saying that they wanted to do that, but I guess those people are no longer there. Uh, but yes, it could. It could really do that. It could really be a whole lot more. And again, Udemy is the unelected leader of the e-learning marketplace space. So they need to, well, step up and make sure uh, that they're doing a good job of it. And personally, I think that if they were to make some adjustments, uh, their, their business model would be a lot better. Uh, and it's only a matter of time before Thinkific eats their lunch. And I really do say that. Um, there's a lot of things behind the scenes that Thinkific is doing, um, Thinkific specifically, that will in some ways perhaps make Udemy a more obsolete uh, platform. And uh, that's not going to be good for the stock price. <laughs> so, you know, I'm a person. And remember, I'm a person that's been on the ground level doing this stuff for more than 10 years now. So I see all these things. I see the people. I know the people in this space that really can take things to the next level. And, you know, myself included, um, you know, what we want to see here. Right. So, again, we have a 42 percent decline from the top here. Right. And so looks like maybe the stock market's picking back up. Let's see, that's possible. Anyway, uh, so I want to just basically conclude this video by saying that uh, if you have, if you all want to start an e-learning business and you want to have a proper business, you know, just like I mentioned in my simple corporation where you have someone writing, recording, video editing, and selling then Thinkific and Teachable are much better options. Don't even think about putting things on Udemy. And if you do, you can use a, um, you can just put it up there under a different name to just get some extra passive income. And uh, that's that's what I would do personally. And, you, and even that last step is completely optional, all right? And so thanks for watching for this. Uh, if you really like this channel, of course you can uh, go and pledge for our Kickstarter here. Our Kickstarter, oh, look at that. Someone bought, just as I was saying that. I always love that when that happens here. So uh, this, is the, this is an amazing Kickstarter. It has so many levels in it. It starts off with web development. We go to app development, machine learning, blockchain, game development, and then interview prep all in one bundle of amazing courses. And each one of these are bundles. So we got bundles within bundles. It's uh, it's an absolutely all-inclusive, complete coding bundle of courses. It's amazing. And you get the previous versions as well. As you can see, we did Hello Coding, um, the first one, and then 2020, and then 3.0, and then now we're at Hello Coding 4.0, right? And just on a side note, I really do like this. <laughs> I really do like this um, uh, 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 image here, right? I took a lot of, uh, I take a lot of care into making my marketing materials amazing, and I could probably do a whole video about that. So please stay tuned. Please pledge for this uh, uh, project here if you really like this channel. It really does help us out the more you pledge, right? And if you look at the rewards here, the more you pledge, the more mammoth courses you get. And when you go to check out, there's options to pledge for even more add-ons that are specifically related 
to this, uh, this course here. And by the way, you're going to get the best discount uh, out of any of our courses by pledging for this. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.